going to talk about winners and losers today. Since we're talking about winners and losers, how about those Los Angeles Rams? What? What? We can talk about losers if you want to. Oh, I feel you. So you heard about the guy who died and went to heaven. He was so shocked that he made it to heaven. And he's just so happy and excited. And he went up to St. Peter and said, man, he said, I didn't know if I was going to make it or not. He said, but man, this is cool. He said, you know, I've always wondered about hell. Is there any way that I could take a look over into hell? And Peter said, yeah, man, just take that elevator right over there and just hit the button, go down, and just make sure you come back. He's sure. So he gets in the elevator. He goes down. The door opens, and it's, it's a blizzard down there. Everything's just frozen over, icicles, and it's just, it's so cold. He slams the door. He comes back up, and he said, hey, Peter, those preachers on the earth told me that hell was fire and brimstone and everything else. That thing's froze over down there, man. It's as cold as I've ever seen anything. And Peter scratched his head. He said, man. I did not know that. Hmm. The Oakland Raiders must have won the Super Bowl. <laughs> so, just so you put it in perspective, last night it was the Cowboys. The first service it was San Francisco. Third service today is Oakland. So, uh, go Rams. Somebody say go Rams. You know, I really have two teams in the world. And anybody that's playing the New England Patriots, I'm rooting for them. And anybody that's playing the San Antonio Spurs, I'm rooting for them. I just hate those two. I don't No, I better get hate out of my heart. I got to go on here. So. <laughs> hey, let's go to the Bible. That'll help me. Go to the Bible. John chapter 15. I'm going to skip a couple verses here. And if you'll take this as an assignment, when you go home, read John chapter 15, you'll be all the better for it. I want you, I want you to hear this message today. Go back. There you go. I am the true vine. Somebody say true vine. This is Jesus talking here. He said, my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. One translation said he gets cut off. If you don't bear fruit, he cuts you off. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. This was interesting to me this week because either way, you're going to get cut. Hmm? <laughs> People say, you know, I'm serving the Lord, man, he's cutting them. Well, if you're not going to serve the Lord, you, you're going to get cut off. If you're serving the Lord, you're going to get cut on. I mean, you're just going to cut because he's trying to cut that flesh out of you. So every branch that bears fruit, he cuts them back. He prunes them so they may bear more fruit. Somebody say more fruit. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. Somebody say, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Mm. I like that part. Somebody say, much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And I hope I can get to this next part. This is really where I wanted to take the message. No longer do I call you servants. For servants, a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things I've heard from my father, I will make known. It's like he's telling them here, I'm going to share with you secrets. Everything I've been known by the father, now that you come into the friend category, I'm going to share it with you. All that I heard from my father, I have made known to you my friend, you did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you that you should go what? Bear fruit and that your fruit, this time you won't lose it. This time your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask in the Father, ask in the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Read this last word, everybody, out loud. These things I command you, that you love. Somebody say love one another. Love. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the atmosphere I sense in this place. 
I thank you that someone is going to get a miracle today. I feel it in my spirit. And so I go ahead and give you some praise ahead of time because you're a good father. Somebody said amen. Why don't you clap your hands like someone's going to get a miracle today? I believe someone's about to get a miracle before this service is over. If I were you and I needed a miracle, I would really be focused. I wouldn't let your mind wonder. I'd get all focused on getting your miracle today. Well, before then, let me talk to you about this John chapter 15 passage. There is a certain mentality that is associated with people who are winners. Winners. People who are winners, they congregate together. They go to the same uh, restaurants together, they hang out at the country club, they play golf together because they're spiritual winners. In the kingdom of God, you have spiritual winners. Pretty soon, if you're in this long enough and you really want to serve the Lord, you find yourself gravitating toward really spiritual people who seem like they figured it out. And this is not about money. Uh, this is not about anything. This is about a mentality of winning. And once you adopt a winner's mentality, you can spot it in other's people. I'm going to be successful. I, just, I can spot it in other people. And once you get this mentality, you can sit and listen to a person for two or three minutes and you will ascertain this conversation is feeding me or it is not feeding me. And sooner or later, you realize there's just some people you can't hang out with very much. Sooner or later, you realize mm, you don't have time to be fooling around with people. Sooner or later, you quit arguing with people just to prove your point. Because you realize some people are never going to get it because their mind is somewhere else. And the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is what they choose to think about. I wrote this book, Mind Viruses, seven words that will change your life. Proverbs 23, verse 7. As you think, so shall you be. Somebody say, as you think, so shall you be. People who are successful are successful because they think about being successful. People that are losing all the time, they're thinking about losing all the time. And if you're hanging out with people that are constantly failing, pretty soon you're going to start failing in some areas that you never thought you'd fail in. You begin to develop a mentality built around your condition. If you're hanging out with dope smokers, you're building a mentality around smoking dope. If you set the thermostat at 60 degrees at your house, uh, you have no right to complain about it being cold. You're the one that set the thermostat, Jethro. If you want the, if you want the heat to turn up, you got to change the thermostat. If you want to start winning more, you got to change your winning thermostat. You got to dial your little your little dish into the all things are possible network. You got to start looking to the author and the finisher of your faith. You got to start winning. Somebody say I'm going to win. So having said all that, let me give you three things about a failing mindset, and then I'll give you three things about a successful mindset. The first one is this. Too many people have misdiagnosed their problem. Misdiagnose the problem. Um, too many problems that believers have are brought on by lack of spiritual conditioning. I believe too many believers are living in spiritual ghettos. I believe too many believers have a slave mentality when it comes to the things of God. Some believers, it just look like they took a downer pill. Everything is down around them. Everything is down. You're broke and everything around you is broke. You're wearing downer clothes. You're, 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 you're renewing your subscription to your marijuana medical card because you're just like being down. And, and marijuana fits your personality. It's quiet in this Methodist church. <laughs> Pretty soon you won't even get out of bed 
and, and you stop combing your hair and you quit brushing your teeth and you're still wearing the same pajamas that's got that gravy stain on it from two weeks ago. You are losing in life. I come to tell somebody, get your blessed assurance out of that bed, comb your hair, brush your teeth, take you a shower, get out of that dungeon you call a home and go to Walmart. I don't have any money, Pastor. Well, go anyway and just look around. Just be looking at some stuff, you know, and, and at least you got out of the dungeon. <laughs> I want to talk to people who love Jesus because I want to, I want to slip this in there because how many, how many of you uh, Jesus freaks know this? If you let the devil, he will turn your house into a spiritual ghetto. How many know we're in a fight and you got to daily rebuke the devil off of your house? You got to re rebuke that spiritual ghetto spirit from trying to get on your house. And pretty soon you realize that you have a spiritual authority to take authority over the devil who's been messing with you. Mm -hmm. There's just, some days you just got to wake up and say, wait a minute. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. No siree, my body belongs to the Lord. I'm not going to be sick like this. My family belongs to the Lord. No devil, you're not going to get my kid. Uh-uh, my finances belong to the Lord. I speak prosperity over my checkbook. I speak blessings over my bank account. I speak blessings on these kids. I speak blessings on my body. Why? Because we're not allowing ourselves to turn into a spiritual ghetto. <laughs> Misdiagnosed your problem. You think your problem came for this reason, but I'm telling you, your problem is a spiritual problem. The second one, the second one, many have misinterpreted the purpose of pruning. In this passage of scripture, he says, I'm going to either cut you off, I'm going to cut you back, so that you'll produce a little bit more fruit. You and I have all been in that season. What do you do when you're doing all that you know to do and things aren't getting better? And, and you plead the blood, you, you go down to the, you go into your cupboard and you get you a dip of Crisco and you put it on your forehead and you anoint your head with Crisco and you start, I mean, and you, you believe that God is ordering step, or, or ordering the steps, the steps of the Lord are ordered, uh, our steps are ordered by the Lord, but all you see are steps of trouble. What is going on here, Lord? You're in a season of pruning. You got to understand the season of pruning. Now, I lived long enough to know that when you get in trouble, you pray. And then I realized sometimes you can pray till your mouth is dry and you don't have any more prayers and the problem can still persist. I've lived long enough to fast long enough until you look like the poster child for crop failure and your troubles are still there. How many know what I'm talking about? What's happening? God is pruning you. He's getting you ready. He's cutting you back over here. He's cutting on you over here because he's the vine dresser. He knows exactly how to make you produce the most fruit. It is not comfortable. And here's another thing. Don't allow anybody to tell you if you're having trouble that you're out of the will of God. Jesus was having a lot of trouble when he went to the cross. He said, Father, I don't like this trouble. If you could take this cross away from me, I appreciate it. But the Father says, no, I got to let this happen. He said, Job, Job was in the will of God, but he had to go through some trouble. You got to understand that there are seasons of pruning and seasons of trouble. Hmm. I, I promise you, God is still on your side. Somebody say, God is still on my side. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, God is on my side. Someone's going to get sick. Someone's going to die around your house. And the truth of the matter is you are the vine and he's cutting on you. He's cutting you back. He's cutting you back. You're going to go through a season of cutback. But how many know a long season of pruning can get on your nerves? You may ever thought that God let me up here a little bit. I mean, God's just pruning you. You're in a season of, of pruning and it's on my nerves. It's, uh, Lord, when are you going to stop this pruning in my life? What's the alternative? He could either cut you off or he can cut on you. Mm, 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 mm. 
And there's some things you just don't understand. I like what Tim's story said. He said it's the miscellaneous department of the Lord. Because how many times something's happening in your life, you can't figure it out, you just got to give it over to the Lord. This is the miscellaneous department of the Lord. You're going through the process and you're going through the test and you're, you're, you don't want to get the process messed up with the purpose or the product. You're going through the process. You're having a test. You remember when the teacher would has, uh, pass you out a test in the class and she would say, uh, okay, there's not going to be any talking while we're taking this test. And about the time you get on question number three, you're thinking, oh, I got a question. Hey, teacher, put your hand down. I told you no talking while you're in the test. But I don't, put your hand down. Now, after the test is over, you can ask all the questions you want to. But I've been serving the Lord long enough to know that when I'm going through a test, sometimes God is silent. He's waiting for us to get through the test. We're, getting, we're going through the test, and pretty soon we're going to finish the test, and I'm ready for promotion now, and I'm here to tell you, you're getting ready for better. Things are about to change for somebody in this room. Better is on the way. Somebody say, better is on the way. Somebody say, I'm better than I was last year. I have better wisdom than I had last year. I have better self-control than I had last year. I have better finances than I had last year. It was good for me to have been afflicted, David said. Had I not been afflicted, I would not have known the Lord. I'm forgetting those things which lie behind me. I am pressing forward to the mark, the prize in Christ Jesus. I am not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. I can see this thing is getting better. Somebody say things are getting better. You got to believe things are getting better. I'm going to write a song. Things are getting better. I guess I better not write a song. So let me give you this second part here. A successful mindset. Somebody say successful mindset. Winners have developed the ability to shift gears in their thinking. You ever catch yourself, oh, my thinking is off today. You ever catch yourself doing that? And you've been in it long enough, you realize, man, I got to shift gears. Hmm. Hmm. How many of you have been blessed, and as soon as you got blessed, you started worrying if the blessing was going to last? I mean, you just came out of one season, and now you're entering in a, another season, and you're worried. I wonder if this is going to last. Knock on wood. It's almost like a cloud hanging over your head and almost like you're waiting for the next bad thing to happen. This is really the wrong thinking. You should be expecting blessings, but you're expecting trouble. The devil is a liar. Do you know there's two voices talking to you all the time? Some of y'all got four voices or five or six, but there's at least two, and the devil is always telling you, you are not going to be successful. You are going to go broke. You're going to die of sickness. Oh, every, I mean, how many know that that's not God's desire for you? You know that God's desire is totally opposite of all of that. So quit listening to the voice of the devil and start listening. I'm going to be, uh, I'm coming into a season. Jesus said, Jesus said, you're going to bear fruit and the fruit's going to remain. You're not going to lose this blessing. You're not going to believe, lose this blessing. And all you can just say, you know what? That season is over. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep this blessing. And, and I'm here to tell you that there are some things that you don't have to go through again. Come on. If you're not careful, the devil will tell you, well, you got rid of that cancer. It's probably going to come back. Uh-uh. Somebody say no. You know, you heard about Joseph, and you, we told you about how Joseph got thrown in the pit, and we told you about how Joseph's brothers got him thrown into prison, and then finally Joseph went to the palace. What we didn't tell you is Joseph never had to go to that pit again. He never had to go to that prison again. I'm here to tell you that season is over. You don't have to go through that again. 
We told you about Job, how Job lost his 10 kids in one day, lost his business, and his body was just racked with boils, looked like he should have died. We told you about all those things, and we told you about how Job came back, and God gave him double for his trouble. That's a word for somebody this year. You're going to get double for your trouble, but we never told you about, Job never had to go through that again. We told you about Miriam and how she got in trouble with Moses, but when they got on the other side of the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was drowned in the sea, she picked up her tambourine and she sang a song, the horse and the rider's been thrown into the sea. We will never see them again. You don't have to go through that again. You gotta believe. Somebody say, you gotta believe. Write this one down because I believe that God is placing an order of protection over your blessing. Whoo, that's good. Mm. God is placing an order of protection over your blessing. I'm coming to tell you this fruit is going to, you're going to bear fruit and this time the fruit is going to remain. I, the, he told him in the Old Testament, I'll keep your shoes from wearing out. I'll keep your bodies from getting sick all the time. I'm going to keep you. I am going to keep you. Mm. What are, you have that verse in Timothy, guys. I don't know if I wrote that out for you. Do you have a verse? I, I know in whom I have believed in. Come on, somebody read this out loud. I know in whom I have believed in, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed to him. Ooh, that's a good verse. You got to be persuaded. You got to know. You got to believe, and you got to be kept by the Lord. How many know what it is to be kept by the Lord? I mean, you went through times of of seasons of loneliness, but everything's going to be all right, Pastor, because I'm kept by the Lord. You might have gone through some financial setback, but you know that you know I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I committed to him. I know that the Lord is going to keep me even though I'm struggling financially, even though my friends have betrayed me. I'm going to be okay because I'm kept by the Lord. Do I have any people that are kept by the Lord? You got to believe that God keeps you. Yeah, but I, you know, Pastor, I had a person come to me the other day and said, you know what, Pastor, I just, I'm so discouraged. What you discouraged about? I just should have been much further down the road and and all my friends are getting blessed and, and I'm not getting blessed and, and, and I don't have a house and I don't have a car and I don't have, you're 18 years old. Quit worrying about those things. You don't want to be a bottle rocket Christian. Where'd she go? She sure made a show for about two seconds, but we ain't seen her in a while. God is not going to bless you too early. He's going to hold some things back so you don't turn out to be a bottle rocket. Christian, some of those teen idols that they have a talent real early and and they peak at 21 or 22. God does not want you to do that. Some of you, some some, some have lost their harvest because they went too fast. Malachi chapter three, he says, I will not let the vine cast its fruit before its time. You don't need to uh, have, have your fruit cast before it's time. You need to bear fruit, the kind of fruit that remains. Is this making sense to anybody? Mm. So look at this next one here. Because winners have developed a relationship with God that is more important than rewards. A lot of people, I don't have enough rewards in my life. God isn't concerned about rewards, God is concerned about your relationship with him. He said, I'm concerned about our relationship. You're asking me to do a lot of stuff in your life, but you and I don't even talk. I'm concerned that you don't trust me, the Lord says. Mm. You didn't lean on me. You don't lean on me. You really don't talk to me. Man, if I were you, I would be talking to me. You need a miracle in your life. Why have you shut me out, says the Lord? Hmm. I just need you to heal my body. 
I can heal your body just like that, but I'm more concerned about our, our talking relationship. You don't seem like you have a relationship with me. Hmm. You know, um, he said in this passage of scripture, he says, I no longer call you uh, servants. I'm calling you friends. I, I want you to change your relationship. You see, this is the way I look at it. There's some believers that have a slave mentality. There's some believers that have a servant mentality. And there's some believers that have a friendship mentality. Slaves take. Servants wait. Friends inherit. Slaves take. You know, a slave is a slave because it's, it's, he's bound under some kind of a of a law or something, so he's a slave. So it's easy for a slave to just take, take, take. And there's a lot of people that they're in the kingdom of God, but they have a slave mentality, take, take, take. I remember when I was growing up, I was so mad at my daddy when I was 15 years of age. He was beating the hound out of me and I was just rebellious as could be. And I remember one time I took my pocket knife out of my pocket when I cut watermelons with it. I used to pick watermelons, and I went over there and I put a scratch on his pickup. I was so ticked at him. This yeah. to teach him to talk that way to me. Slave mentality. Because the brutality that I was taking on, I had a slave mentality. But before he died, we got to be friends, and I realized, hey, I like this friendship a whole lot better than that slave stuff. You got to get into the friendship aspect of God because here's what happens when you become a friend of God. God will start sharing secrets with you. He said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Now I want to share some stuff with you. I saw you lying on your bed crying the other day. I wanted to tell you, but you were still a servant. You still had a slave mentality. I want to tell you why some of your friends can no longer hang around you, but you're not ready to receive that word yet. I, I wanted to tell you why you had to go to the hospital, but you're not even ready for that word yet. If you would come into a relationship with me and we would start having this daily conversation, I could share a whole lot more with you. I could tell you why you're experiencing so many different difficulties because I want to take you into a season that you can enjoy. You're coming into the land of promise, a land flowing with milk and honey. I want you to walk in there in faith. I can't have you walking in there in fear thinking, oh, is this going to last? Oh, maybe he's out to get me. Oh, you know how the master is. He's going to hit me in the head again. I don't want you to walk in there like that. I want you to walk in your promised land. Tell the Canaanites, tell the Amalekites, tell the Jebusites and the Parasites. That's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord, and I'm done with you, devil. I am no longer a slave. Somebody say, I'm no longer a slave. Because God does not want you to end in a down position. He don't want you stepping into heaven in downer mode. You walking into heaven in defeat. Looking at defeat, looking at defeat, looking at defeat, looking at... Get your head up. Lift your head. Lift your eyes up into the heels from which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. The devil has been lying to you long enough. That season is over. You tell the devil to go back to hell where he belongs. It's a shift. It's a shift. Let me give you this last one because winners have developed a faith built on trust. And it's a, it's a simple adjustment that you make in your brain. It's, it's, you have to shift gears. And, 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 and this is not a prayer trying to get something from God. You, you will come to a place of maturity in your walk with God when you're no longer just going to spend time with him. Give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. <laughs> and a lot of Christians are there. No, no, no. This is different. You're, you're coming to the Lord and you're enjoying your relationship. Why? Because you've already been exercising your faith and your faith is already calling some things that are not as if they were. Let me just illustrate it. You got another minute? Uh, Lord, I just, 
Lord, would you please, would you please, would you please heal my body, Lord? Would you please touch my children, Lord? Would you please, I'm begging you, please, I won't ask you for another thing. I'm begging you, please, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Shut up. Get some faith in your voice. And you, the, the Lord gave you the authority to call those things that are not as if they were. He said, you need to speak to your body. Quit begging God to heal your body. You speak to your body. Body, you're well in the name of Jesus. You children aren't going to hell. Not on my watch. See, some of you, you, you have faith and you don't even know it. Some of you have faith and you don't even exercise it. Every one of you sitting under my voice in this room, you have faith. I can just tell it because you're sitting there. Well, you mean, Pastor? Because I was watching you when you came in. Not one of you looked up under your chair. I wonder if this is going to hold me today. You know, I did gain some weight over the holidays. I'm not quite sure. Let me, get, let me hold, hold, hold on. Before y'all sit down, wait a second. I didn't see a one of you checking out your chair. And you put your whole blessed assurance on that cushion. And you didn't even check it out. What? You got faith. And if you can trust something that was made by a man, how much more can you trust your heavenly father It's a relationship built on trust. You trusted that old bucket of boats to make it to church. <laughs> what is it? What good is it to have someone that you love in your life and you can't trust them? Hmm? I got some cousins. If they came over at my house, I'll hide the silverware. Cause I don't trust them. We got the same blood going through our veins, but they are sorry sack of snakes. Anybody got cousins? What good is it that, that you're going down the road and you're driving your car and they got Maypop tires on it? Oh, y'all don't know Maypop. They may pop anytime. You need you a vehicle that's going to get you there. You need some tires that are going to get you there. That's faith. I'm going to buy me a set of tires. Invest in your relationship with the Lord. And I'm telling you, it's like a brand new set of tires. You don't have to worry about getting there. And the last half of the ride with Jesus is going to be better than the first half of the life. I like Dr. Dave Martin who said the rest of your life is going to be the best of your life. trying to get some of you to get out of your slave mentality. As long as you're in a slave mentality, you can't receive the benefits of the kingdom. And the benefits are so far reaching. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow, the book of Psalms said. You need to get in on that. Holy Spirit is knocking on your door right now. And some of you, I promise you, this is exactly what you've been looking for. You just need to make a commitment to God. I'm going to sell out, Pastor. I got another word for you. Sell out the whole route. Sell it all out. Take it all out. I was talking to a guy the other day. He ticked me off. Church guy. And he about half backslidden. And he's about half in the church. You know, when you get old like me, you quit fooling around with long answers. You just tell people, you stupid. <laughs> no, I don't ever do that, but because I'm a pastor. I told this guy, I looked at him and said, the world has yet to see what would happen if you would sell out 100% to God. 
but you've had this half in, half out relationship with God. It's not working, baby. You're not getting the benefits that you're hearing about because your, your, foot, your, your feet are more into the world than they are with God. Living half for God won't work because you got all this bad behavior. Which one of you parents would reward a child for bad behavior? No. Which one of you employers would reward an employee for bad behavior? Uh Uh-uh. You wouldn't do that. You want to bless the good child for good behavior. You want to bless the good employee for good behavior. How much more is our heavenly father out passing out gifts to people who will step all the way into the kingdom and be not just a servant, but find their place in the kingdom? I'm out of time. In the Old Testament, I don't have time to build this case, but let me just give you the top of it. In the Old Testament, they had a whole mentality about slaves. Because see, they came up out of Egypt land, they were all slaves. And when they got into promised land, nobody had anything. And some people just had to live for a while with nothing at all, and they couldn't survive. So they would go and sell themselves to a family and be a slave for that family just to have groceries. And Moses wrote a lot about it and through Leviticus and Deuteronomy. And he, he kept telling the Israelites, you be nice to your slave. You be kind to your fellow Jewish slave. Don't you treat them like other countries treat their slave because you one time were a slave. You better treat them right. And on the seventh year, you are to let them go free. And especially in the year of Jubilee, anybody can go free. But somewhere between the six and a half year to the seventh year, the slave had to make a decision if he wanted to become a servant. And a servant for that household forever. So the slave would come up and say, you know, my family really enjoyed serving your family. We think we'd like to be the servant for, the, for your house for the rest of our lives. They would have a ceremony and the master of the house would take the servant over to a, a fence post and he would take his lobe of his ear and he would take a little pallet and drive an awl, A-W-L, through his earlobe. That served as a sign that this man this woman was a servant of that household for the entirety of their life. Some of y'all need to get an earring with Jesus. Some of y'all need to get over to the fence post and say, I'm yours, Jesus. Go ahead and mark me as yours. Well, I can't do that. Mm. Therein is the problem. You can't sell out the whole route. And until you do, you're not going to have all the successes of the kingdom. Pastor Ian, I'm going to have you come because I want to pray for somebody that needs a miracle. Somebody's in this room and you need a miracle. I'm not talking about a little bitty miracle. I'm talking about a major life changing miracle. Some of you do not know this, but you walked into a place that is a seedbed for miracles. There has been so much prayer packed into this service alone. One of the things I hope to do with every one of you is every time you come in, your faith rises a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. But there's someone here that your faith is really on the bottom. You're in a good place because this is the atmosphere of faith and you're going to get a miracle. But to try to get you to believe that you deserve that, I got to get you out of slave mentality. I got to get, but before we do all that, I'm going to have Pastor Ian pray for miracles in this house right now. So if you're here right now and you need a miracle, just throw your hand in the air. I'm talking about a major miracle. Just sort of wave at me right now. Wave at us. Pastor Ian, anything you got to say? There's some people that need a miracle in this room. 
Yeah, I was down there and I was feeling the Lord is saying some people have started this year with a, a good intention to break an old habit. I don't know whether it's sugar, whether it's alcohol, some addiction, something, but, but you've tried now and now you've done your best and it didn't work. But that there's a power that can break addiction. Yes, yes. Your pastor talks about like four things that just when God, when he, when he gave everything, when he put his ear low to that, to that post, it's called the cross. And he said, Jesus, I cannot, but you can. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> things just became, it just loosed. And there's some of you have addictions that you, you just know you cannot stop. I mean, you, you're sincere, but you're just human and you've been, you've been trapped. And when you're trapped, you can't get out. And I just believe that today that when you say, God, I cannot, but you can. Yes. And, and, and I'm going to submit to you. And I really need something supernatural. I think that's one of the miracles yes. God, that yes. God is going to do. Not just cancer yes. going to disappear out of people's bodies and other things like that. But even those who are listening to us and maybe in prison. And, and you can be in your home and still be in prison. You don't need to yes, be in a yes, building yes, that have guards yes. and, and barbed wire. Yes. You're in a prison and you're listening to us on the airwaves and God is going to heal you, touch you. But yes. you've got to put your ear low and say, God, I'm, I'm going to listen now. Yeah. Whatever you want, I'm going to do it. If, 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 can you just raise your hands? Let's believe the Lord. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, in the name we of declare Jesus. you Lord. We plead yes. the blood of Jesus over yes. everyone who hears yes. the sound of my voice right yes. now. The blood of Jesus is against yes. you, Satan. Yes. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word yes. of our testimony. Yes. And we take authority over yes. every dominion spirit that has yes. taken a hold of the mentality and minds and yes. hearts of people. And we say, yes. no, let my people go. go. Let my people go. Let, go. let my people go, let says go. the Lord. And we speak deliverance. We speak miraculous power yes. to come yes. upon those areas right now. We release uh -huh. a spirit of liberty and freedom. Uh -huh. Where the spirit of the Lord is, uh -huh. there's freedom. Where the uh -huh. spirit of the Lord is, there's revelation. Uh -huh. yeah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, yeah. there is deliverance yeah. from oppression. Yeah from yes. sickness and disease and we yes. release the Holy yes. Spirit Lord from yes. the from the north to the south yes. to the east to the west in yes. this building through the airways yes. God right yes. now touch people yes. let them sense your presence yes. God let them feel yes. something feel something yes. is just shifted yes. in their hearts as they yes. submit yes. to you and we promise yes to testify yes. to what you've done yes to be witnesses of your goodness yes so we release that. Now just begin to take a moment and just begin to thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him. We thank yes. you, Lord. Come on, yes. come on. Don't let yes. me do this for yes. you. Yes. Don't let me, don't let me do this for you. Come on, let's thank him. Let there be a roar of deliverance in this house. And a roar of freedom. A roar, a roar of thankfulness. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We want you, Lord. We want more of you, Jesus. Lord over my affections. Yeah. Jesus is Lord over my body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle though, however, if you've never given your heart to the Lord, you need to do so. That's a miracle of faith right there. So if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, you're watching me by podcast, you're picking me up in the airways, or you're listening to me at a jail cell, or you're picking me up on Facebook Live right now, I want to pray a prayer and give you an opportunity to give your heart to the Lord. I don't want you to walk away saying, I don't know if I'm saved or not. So if you need to get born again, I want you to pray this prayer. Invite Jesus Christ into your heart right now. Let's help him out, church. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my mind. I give you my body. I give you everything. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me of unrighteousness. I want to be a born-again Christian. You died for me. I'm going to live for you. Fill me with your spirit. Tell me what to do. I'm all yours. I love you, Jesus. Somebody said amen. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen.